Hello everyone, my name is Gary Gavini. This is my third year in St. Thomas University. And oh, I'm getting a bachelor's in biology specialization in research. And I was honored to be working in the USDA with the entomology department and behavior analysis with the experiment that they gave me was trapping Caribbean fruit fly with plant essential, plant essential oils and fruit orders. Um, the reason why like, we're conducting these type of experiments is because one, the carafly does cause a lot of ecological and economical damage to our fruits that we give out for a profit. So we're trying to find the best way in using environmentally safe repellents without using harmful chemicals to protect the plants that we use against the, to prevent carafly to ever be close and injecting their eggs within the fruits. And also by doing some new experiments, we're also trying to see a new better methods in trying to capture the, the Caribbean fruit fly. So the purpose of my experiment is one, because we're, we're working on a new type of experiment that's never been done in the USDA in South of Miami. So working with fruit oils and plant essential oils is a new step into the research. So we're trying to find out if natural orders are going to be as strong attractive to the carafies. And we want to see if these natural orders may actually um, outperform our standard, which is ammonium acetate and putrescine patch, which is created by Dr. Nancyevsky and Bafi. So the picture we're looking here is a female Caribbean fruit fly, which was first identified in Key West, Florida, 1931. It's a small yellow-brown color species with a nice pattern wings, and it's two times larger than a house fly. So the fruits that the carafly is attracted to are such common fruit like common guava and citrus trees, which are grown here in South Florida. Now the reason why this fly is such a pest is because of this extremity found here, this is the ovipositor. One is in the case that it's a female carafly, and this allows her to inject her eggs within the fruits, and three to four days later, the eggs will hatch into larvae, pupate, and through 10 to 14 days, we have new adult flies flying around in the environment. So we're trying to find new, better ways in stopping the care flies being able to go into the fruit. So other pests we do look outside in the field are corn silk flies and spotted rachisophilus. <coughs> so these are flies that we want to keep inside our traps. But, and we have our beneficials that are ladybugs, the, um, lace wings, and orchard bees. These are either pollinators or assassin bugs to the carafly. So we want to make sure that our, our attractants also are repellent for these beneficials. So before we ran any experiment, what we worked with is a small simulation of a wind tunnel. The way the wind tunnel is, is a controlled environment that helps us determine if our, our, our treatments can be an attractant or repellent to our specimen and also helps us determine which treatment the specimen would prefer more. So the way the wind tunnel works is at the upwind position, there's a carbon filter to make sure there's no competing orders from the outside environment to come within, and a motor at the opposite end. The motor is either used as a pull or push system with a no volume air. In our case, we use it as a pull system where we deploy our flies at the opposite end, that air will be pulled toward the flies, so we have our two attractants here. So we see the flies never moved, from the position we left them off in the past 24 hours, that means either the scent was not attracted to the fly or could be a possible repellent. And we do see them roaming around the wind tunnel or even within the traps that shows that those treatments were attractants. So what we use as our attractants were hog thumb and carambola purees. These two fruits are a host for the caraflies and they were in season at the time of this experiment. So we had our flies protein starved and non starved. We ran this trial for Four times, about four straight days, and we had always a total number of 50 flies within the wind tunnel. So when we had our flies non-starved, we saw that hot pump had the highest capture. Then when the flies were protein starved, hot pump had, still had the same amount of capture, but the carrying bullet decreased. So it's something to look at out in the field and see, expect us what we might see <coughs> in the capturing numbers. So the essential oils that we worked with were orange oil, ginger root oil, tea tree oil. The fruit orders that we used were hog thumb and carambola. The materials that we had to use were a yellow bottom multi-lure trap where the yellow base allows a liquid such as a 10% environmentally safe antifreeze. This also preserves the fly or mixed with the pure rays as well. We also had a nice con uh, compartment for a cotton wing to allow one millimeter of oil to be put in and make sure that no flies will also enter but the scent will still be released. We also had ammonium acid and putrescine patches, which was hanging in within the trap as well. So what we had to do was puree our fruits and gather the oils. Then when we just went out to the field, we had to set up our traps with our individual treatments. We'll deploy the traps.